So in our discussion of graphs and charts, we put a lot of attention on finding ways to illustrate how data is distributed and how to visually identify outliers. Well, now we're going to shift directions and start looking at numeric methods for summarizing data, starting with methods for determining where the center or middle of the data is. So um, we're actually going to have a little difficulty here. As we start to look at the different methods, you'll see that all of them have problems that show up in specific circumstances. So we're going to be discussing not only how to calculate the different measures, but we're also going to talk about when to use each one. All right, our first measure is the arithmetic mean, what you're probably used to hearing called the average. So to find this, all you have to do, we add up all the data values and then divide by how many data values there are. So we've got a quick example here, right? I'm looking at student test scores again. And what I've written here on the right is the mathematical notation for the mean. Right, so this first symbol here, this is the Greek letter sigma, it's capital sigma. And what that means is add up everything that comes next. Right, Sigma's letter S, think of it as, as a shorthand way of saying a sum. Right, so now throughout the class, we're going to use a lowercase x to represent an individual data value. So sigma x means add up all the data values. And n represents the number of data values. And again, that's another notation that we're going to use throughout the rest of the class. So next to that, I've got the actual calculations. The sum of the data values is 17. 0.21 there are 24 values in the table right and if so if you take 17.21 and divide that by 24 you get the mean or average grade that is 0 0.717 so I've got three similar data sets here and what I'd like you to do is just for practice try calculating the mean of all three of them right and then we'll talk about why each one is significant Okay, so for the first data set here, this is 250 divided by 6, and that's 41.67. The second one is 250 divided by 5, which is 50. And the right-hand one, this one, if you add them all up, you get 360. So this is 360 uh, divided by by six, excuse me, that should be 350. Checking my math in my head here. That's 350 divided by six, which is 58.33. So those, those are our means. Right now, um, what are we seeing here? Right? That makes the difference between the two outer sets and the middle one, right, the difference between these two sets is 8.33, if you subtract the two, and the difference between these two is 8.33, right? And that's a fairly significant change, right? That's almost a whole letter grade difference. And all I did to get from one of these to the other was change a single grade, right? I added a single grade here, the zero, and I added a single grade here, that's the 100, right? Now, it was a significant change, right? That grade was significantly different from the others, and you can see that visually, right? I've graphed all three of those data sets here, right? And you can see how distinct that zero is from the rest of the data and how distinct the 100 is from the rest of the data, right? That the what we're seeing here is each of these data sets has two what are called outliers, right? Data that is a, a single data value that is significantly separated from all the others. And what you're seeing here with the mean is something that's called sensitivity to outliers, 
All right, the, the mean is what's called sensitive to outliers, which means that a single value that's significantly spread out from the rest can have a disproportionate impact on the final result. All right, so with that in mind, the mean is your best choice for a measure of the center of the data when the data is relatively evenly distributed. And you can see that's the case here in the, in the middle set where the data is evenly distributed on both sides of that mean value, right? It wouldn't be the best option for the left and right data sets because of those two outliers, which are causing the data to be what's called skewed. All right, so we would describe the first data set as being skewed to the left, and the second is what we call skewed to the right. All right so our second measurement um, is the literal middle of the data set. So if you arrange the data in order, then look at the number in the middle of the list, that value will be the median. So looking at the data here, the first thing you know, need to notice right, is that the data isn't sorted. So we can't just look to the middle yet. Anytime you're looking for the median, your first step has to be sorting the data. Right? That's what I've done here. Right? Now I have all the numbers in ascending order. Once you've done that, you can take you can take the middle value. To do that, I like to just cross the values off, right? Cross off one from each end until you end up in the middle. There's the median. All right, now there is one unusual situation you can end up with, right? This data set has an even number of values. So there isn't a value in the middle, right? Uh, it would have to be here between 46 and 71. And actually that's how we're gonna find our answer. If we average these two middle values, 46 plus 71 divided by two, we get 58.5, uh, and that number is the one that we'll use as the median for this data set. So why don't you try the same exercise here that we did with the mean, right? Determine all three medians, uh, and then we'll talk about how they compare. All right, so hopefully you saw in all three cases, you should have come up with 50, right? The same value for all three. So what we're seeing here is the exact opposite of what we saw with the mean. The median is generally not sensitive to outliers. So when we have data that isn't clustered around a central point, like the middle set, the median will be a good choice for a measure of the center of the data because it's not gonna be unduly shifted by those outliers. Okay, so those are our first two values, first two measures, the, the mean, and the median. In the next lecture, uh, we're going to look at the second two of our measures of central tendency. Where we're going to talk about uh, the mode and something called the mid-range.